And boom, boom, boom. There we go. Again and again. Grabando, grabando. Fancast, grabando. Or should I say fan talks? Today is the first episode in quite some time where I'm interviewing somebody who is not from Puerto Rico. Today we're with an artist from Maryland, USFA. Um, they do their music. They do their vocals. I believe they also do their visual art but maybe they can expand upon that throughout the interview. Today, we're with Lizzie's personal army. How are you doing? Hi, I'm doing good. Awesome, awesome. So, Liz, I know I asked you this before we started uh, recording, but again, I've got to ask, how are you doing? How's Maryland right now? Or at least where you're at? Maryland's, you know, it's cool. Uh, more people playing shows here than before the pandemic, so... I think there's a bit of like, you know, water coming back to the well type shit. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's getting a little chilly. I'm ki- I kind of wanted to get colder so I can bring out the cute sweaters. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. What do you have in mind specifically? Like, what are the have, what are the colors and stuff like that? I have this really cute, like, it's like a turtleneck, but it's like really fluffy and it's like it has bunnies on it. And like, I've definitely like been cute in many spaces with that. So I want it back. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, okay, so Liz, as I mentioned, uh, I know you do your music, your as far as productions and vocals go, but I gotta ask, do you also do the visuals? And if so, what came before? Was it music? Was it the visuals? Was it all in the whole package? How did it all happen? It's it's that's a fun one to answer. So I don't make my visual art, but I mm-hmm. did do visual art before music. Um, so that kind of gives me like enough information where I I sort of suit myself as like a creative director, you know, like me and Gloomy Gonza, who is a really dope artist, uh, designed this lizard character. Um, I gave him like a 13 page, like manifesto on what I wanted this era to sound like. Um, and I was like, yeah, it has to be like an angel, but like evil a little bit too. And like gay and obviously a lizard. Um, there's like a stock image that basically, if you saw that, you would see, oh, that's where the inspiration came from. But then we threw Gex in there, and uh, I was there's say, no going back. <laughs> I was gonna say Gex and Vima, I think it is the Digimon characters. It also but reminds me of that character. Yeah. yeah, there's definitely Digimon influences because you know Digimon. If you look at all the the original art from it from like the '90s, 2000s, they have like beautiful eyeliner and mascara. Like they always be slaying, and I'm like, we, we got we got to start, you know, taking inspiration from them. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. I also noticed that some of the artwork that you've shared across your Instagram, um, it's also very min- reminiscent of that era, be it Sonic characters, be it stuff like Pada Pada the Rapper, which you have in your background right there. Um, so before talking about some of your influences, shout out to Kafka good friend good friend who put me put me on to your music um carlo fonsi casca if you see this thank you for showing me liz's music um so yeah influences what are some of your musical influence like i noticed some hip-hop sometimes r&b sometimes hyper pop sometimes electronic music from all types of electronic music so what are some of like the bands or djs or solo artists that have inspired your work since you were a kid up to now? Uh, I would say the very first spark in my head that I, and there was something about music that was like special, was playing Jet Set Radio Future for the original Xbox. Um, The composer for that game, Hideki Naganuma, has went on to make a bunch of cool soundtracks. And he's kind of a legend in his own right, whether it's for his like funky musical styles and like sample flipping, um, or it's like, you know, posting Peter Griffin, family guy on Twitter. Uh, he's he's a memester, but he's also like a legend and definitely heavily influenced my music. Um, but I think, you know, in the past few years, I've had kind of like a my brain has expanded when it comes to music because I used to just listen to video game soundtracks, like only video games. Um, and then, you know, I started getting into like hip hop with like the gorillas and uh, BC Boys and Deltron 3030. Uh and then moving on to more contemporary stuff like Wu Tang and Eminem, and then finding the weird shit like Flying Lotus and uh, 
when I found Flylo, that's like when everything changed. Like I, that was like a Danny Phantom moment. Like I stepped through the portal. <laughs> nice. Um it was it was Flylo, Death Grips, uh JPEG Mafia. Uh those are just some like oh yeah, Apex Twin. Like those are just some like the most like mind bending acts that forced me to like reconsider what I was doing. <laughs> um so yeah, you know, I think I think I really love me some like good melodies. I love me some like glitchiness. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. You mentioned the melodies, the glitchiness, but you also mentioned Death Grips and JPEG. Sometimes they can be pretty heavy, like taking from that side of either punk rock or hardcore or heavy metal to the heart and just putting it out there with the music. Do you see yourself at some point going that route, like heavy music, like heavy, heavy music? Yeah, you know, I don't think you'll ever catch me like, well, that's a lie. I have some demos where I am screaming on the tracks, but like, you know, I, 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 I want to always find myself at this intersection between cute and deadly. Um, and I think on all lizards, I did kind of show that with some tracks like green diamonds, um, green target and stuff like that. Like those green tracks were supposed to be like on bridal lizard energy. Um, and now I'm working on an album where it's like, I'm really chasing those like punk influences more. Um, it's sounding like, Right now, sound like electronic punk music, which is like really fun. Ooh, nice. Is there a is there a set date for that? Like this, as I mentioned before, we started recording, might come out next week. So that you know, mid October twenty twenty three. Do you have a set date for that new project? Uh, no promises, because like every time I say a date, I watch it pass by. <laughs> it happens. It happens. You, know. but at least that says that you are determine on your work you know That's yeah um that being said when it comes to music like this is one of the most um cliche questions to ask but i gotta ask you do you always start with the music first and then the lyrics or is it vice versa or is it a, a piece by piece thing how does it work usually when you're cooking you know, I think, yeah, it's it's always a bit of a piece by piece thing, because like, like, I'm not a songwriter first, so like, I'm not going to be out here like scribbling like whole poetries inside of my notes app. Mm -hmm. But like, a lot of times, phrases will come to mind or like emotions or just thoughts. And you know, I write those down. And then I'll be making beats or I hear a beat. And then I'll just want to pull up my notes app and start going through all those words and freestyling it out and then just kind of like piecing it together. Um, but when it comes to the lyric writing, a lot of times, yeah, it's really like a scattered haphazard situation. Uh, as for beats, I make beats all the time. So like, it's just about the ones that inspire me. Super nice. Question. If you were to release music right now, without even thinking about the amount or, or quality or, you know, what have you. How many songs would you say that you would release like right now, right now, right now? If Whoa, you were to that, put it all out there. That's a really cool question. Um, you know, I that because it raises something interesting about like quantity and quality, right? Because yeah. like you see a lot of artists nowadays, they'd be releasing like 30 song albums that are like two hours and it's all mid mm -hmm. um and stuff like that. And I think something with my projects is that I always wanted to be like back to back bangers. Like I want every track to bring something unique um, and like expand like the world of my sound a bit more. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, no more than like 14 tracks um, mm -hmm. at a time is what I would say. Gotcha. Yeah. You also, I forgot to ask this earlier. I should have, but I'll ask it now. Video game music was a heavy part of your childhood and you know you're growing up as a musician and music listener so if you had the opportunity would you score a video game and if so what type of video um it's a good question uh, unfortunately i have like a super answer which is that i've scored for like a lot of games um mm -hmm. like i i am a video game composer back in like 2014 or 2015 i started getting into it uh just friends pulling me into the projects um and yeah, I've been making video game music for a while, uh, but there's definitely some goals in mind, like for projects I don't want to be attached to. Like, I always wanted to do those like dynamic soundtracks, you know, soundtracks where it's like 
when you touch this object, the music changes, or like when you're like fighting an enemy, the music, like drums get added in. I find that kind of stuff really cool. But whenever I pitch it to people, they're like, that's hard to program. <laughs> that's going to yeah. add a lot more work, which is totally understandable. Yeah. But it adds an extra layer to the game. Right? Yeah. So, like you ever play like the Zelda games, like yeah, the recent yeah. ones, or even Wind Waker, I think, does it. Um, Really cool stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can easily, and I don't know if this is because I saw the trailer, like, I rewatched the trailer a few days ago, but imagine, if you will, a Super Mario RPG type of game, but with characters inspired by this personal army. That would be some funky shit right there. I don't know about that, you. That would be crazy. I, I would do it. I would do it. So just spitting out ideas, you take it as you will, my friend. Totally. Um, I mean, just to expand on that, like, I've already made the decision that, like, for the rest of my life, whatever I make that's, like, non-music is going to have, like, a bunch of lizard characters. Like, it's just got to, like, that's my agenda. I have a lizard agenda. <laughs> <laughs> Why lizards? You got to ask as well. Why lizards? Uh, you know, it's like, I don't know, they're just, like, little scamperers and, like, kind of like gremlins in a way, you know, like... Yeah. I feel like they're kind of like overlooked in terms of like popular animals. Like most people, you know, when they think of like cute animals, they like they're like, oh, wolves or like foxes or something. But like lizards are just cool. They're like different. They change colors and stuff. Uh, there's all types of them. Um, and also, I've just been a huge fan of like, I don't know, like lizard characters like Gex and like Latch from Lethal League and stuff. Like it's just cool. They're spiky. Yeah, they, <laughs> they got sharp teeth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whereas is Yoshi your main in Super Smash? Then? Actually, used to be. Uh, for practicality reasons, I play different characters that are like better, quote unquote. But if I if I hop in Ultimate, I'll play some Yoshi any day. Yeah. No, 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 no. I play melee usually, so okay. I'm not opposite. <laughs> are you like a part of the hardcore melee scene, or just playing it on your? Um, I guess. You can consider me not a casual. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I'm just an observer, you know. I just every now and then watch Hungry Box videos or stuff related to the scene because I didn't know it existed until pandemic. So, you know, I'm just a learner, if you will. Um, that being said, are you a Godzilla fan as well? Oh, Godzilla's the homie for sure. There yeah, go. there you go. There you go. Are you excited for the? For the new Godzilla, Godzilla minus one, I think it was called. The trailer. Yeah, it looks really cool. I saw the designs. I was, like, this is what I care about ultimately. Like, because sometimes the Godzilla designs don't be hidden, yeah. but these ones do, and I'm 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 pretty excited for it. Yeah. <laughs> same here. Same here. Same here. Diehard fan right here. Um, that being said, back to the music. As I mentioned earlier, you've explored hip hop, R and B, trap, electronic music, hyper pop, etc. Is there one specific type of sound that you want to explore in a future project? Hmm. I want to explore like 90s alternative rock. Like I want to make some like Nirvana type shit, you know? Um, I guess not grunge though, but like, yeah, just like there was a sound in the late 90s, like early late 90s with like indie rock that was really cool. Those like raw guitars and like catchy melodies. It was a good compromise between like pop and like I don't know, angsty rock stuff. I want I want to explore that more. <laughs> yeah, I can totally see where you're coming from. Like there's that there's that unique 90s rock sound that you you hear the guitars and you hear the drums and you immediately identify it. Same with like 80s rock, you know? Um yeah, absolutely. Question. Yeah, I know you make your own beats, but do you also play guitar and stuff like that? Or do you plan to make that type of music with like other musicians that'll accompany you along the way. I uh so I, I like to play guitar. I'm not particularly good at it in a in a sense that like I would like to bring other guitarists in. Um yeah, it would be sick. I always wanted to have a band. Um because like that would be that'd be dope. Can they can, they can I can really have an army, right? <laughs> <laughs> little, um, little, little. They can all dress as like different color lizards or something. It'll be sick. Um yeah. But no, yeah, I always wanted to work with like drummers and guitarists and stuff and see what I could write for like a bunch of instrument players, but hasn't quite happened yet. Yeah, gotcha, still gotcha. waiting. Yeah, yeah. Maybe in a not so limited, not so distant future. Maybe. Yeah. Um, that being said, you mentioned that if that were to happen, 
maybe everybody could dance as lizards or dress as, as lizards. You know? So if we were to do a live show with an entire band, would it be like that? Like some gore type of shit or some <laughs> David Bowie, everybody dressed as a different character type of shit? I definitely want to have claws. I think it's really imp- it's really important to have claws um, and uh, a tail. I think claws and a tail I got to have. Um, and, you know, I would, lo- I would want everyone to come in with like, yeah, lizard merch, like, you know, rocking shirts or like hats, uh, whatever they got, you know, to like rep the lizards. It would be sick if you guys could do like some good sale type of kite. And stuff. Yeah, that would be and, crazy. Yeah. I mean, obviously not destroy the place, but, you know, have some fun with it. You know? Yeah, maybe, cause maybe a little a liz- destruction. Yeah, maybe a lizard mosh pit. Who knows? Lizard <laughs> mosh pit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that being said, talk to me a little bit more about, like, your childhood. Like, was music always a big thing in your life? Or you mentioned that you were also a, you're also a visual artist a bit. So what... What was your main influence as a kid? Was it visual arts? Was it music? Was it a little bit of anything? What was mm-hmm. it? I, I, you know, I was surrounded by music a lot as a kid from like my dad listening to like all kinds of rap and hip hop and my mom listening to a lot of like R&B and stuff. We would, we'd be bumping like Biggie in the car and stuff. But honestly, it's funny for the first like nine to 10 years of my life, I really didn't understand like listening to music. Like I, I usually didn't like sit down and listen to music. There had to be like, a video or something to it you know like i loved vh1 i love like apple levine and stuff like that um but it was for the videos too like i, I always thought that was like part of the experience um so during that time i was practicing drawing and like writing poetry and stuff um and, and during that time i think it was invader zim that was my biggest influence which i think still kind of shows up now because like well i guess like for one like philosophically uh lizzie's personal army is a lot about like taking over the world and like this kind of like playful destruction um that's going on like it's like kind of like a harmless evil right it's like oh i'm doing these schemes but it's like some doofenshmirtz shit like it actually helps everybody um and invader zim is a lot like that it's like you know like this alien has come to destroy earth but like can't do it like there's no way he will so it's just like this evil hijinks um and I, I would like draw on that style a lot and stuff. I would, I would just be copying stuff from like Nickelodeon and like Cartoon Network. Uh, but there was a point where like I just started making music and uh, that kind of took over everything. I still draw occasionally though. Gotcha. So if you had the opportunity to make, to expand Lizzie's personal army into other type of media, would you also consider cartoons at some point? Oh, absolutely. That would be so cool. Um, I, I would love to make like uh so like I guess one of my favorite games as a kid was Ninja Gaiden. I've always had a thing for like violence and like action and stuff like that. Cool. So I would want it to be like like an all lizard universe, but like it's like like samurais and stuff. Like, you know, like like I want some like bloody sword battles and stuff. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. I'll have to ask you this question because it just popped off, but Recently, a friend of mine sent me a video from a podcast, I think it was, where one person asked the other, if you could, if you would eliminate one or the other with everything in its history, which one would it be? Cartoon Network or Nickelodeon? Nickelodeon. <laughs> I know, right? It's such an easy answer, right? Right. I mean, because, okay, here's the Nickelodeon has Spongebob and Spongebob is the best cartoon ever. Sure. I totally agree with that. But uh, Fairly Odd Parents, like you like that shit has not aged well. (laughs) That just isn't good anymore. Um, Like iCarly, like, are you kidding? Like like, that is not aged well. So like, meanwhile, Cartoon Network has the bangers because they have the cartoon cartoon era that everyone was nostalgic for. Uh, which is like you know uh, Dexter's Lab and like yeah. Samurai Jack and all that stuff, but then they hit the new era running with fucking a uh, regular show and a show I've been rewatching lately, uh, Adventure Time, because yeah. you know they came out with Fiona and Cake. Um, yeah, so yeah, awesome. yeah, like Cartoon Network is like they have IPs that like are so strong they're still going on and are still like respected. Meanwhile, you got like their best Nickelodeon's best IP, SpongeBob, is like 
than hella discs. It's because it's so low quality now, you know. So mm-hmm. we're gonna have to blow up Nickelodeon. Sorry. <laughs> not to mention, <laughs> not to mention Toonami, Adult Swim as well, Ricard Network. I mean, Adult Swim, like, come on, right? Like, yeah, so easy. Such a no brainer. I mean, <laughs> I don't remember who the person was, but if you ever get to watch this, I mean, Cartoon Network all the way, you know? Yeah. Um. Also, another question I was going to ask. Um, I don't know how old you are, but what has been the biggest change you've noticed in the art and music scene uh, pre-pandemic and post-pandemic? It's kind of a sad question because like, I don't think it's a good change. I don't think anything's changed really that well. Uh, you know, I'm 26. I've been making music uh, pretty seriously for like 10 years now. And um, I don't know. I mean, it's just like, I feel like before the pandemic, like there was more of like a market for like recruiting people with talents and like creative talents. Like there was a lot of like indie developers who were like pulling in like artists and musicians and stuff. And I feel like during the pandemic, everyone became like a jack of all trades. Like everyone was like, I'm going to learn how to do everything. Um, So that everyone, a lot of developers have come out of the pandemic like, having an okay enough knowledge in most things to get by um and they don't really have to put themselves out on like hey i'm looking for this and that so i think that's one big thing is that there's a lot less like community driven like economy to the arts and music industry um i think during the pandemic it was pretty pretty fun because like the hyper pop scene was really popping off and like people were like collaborating online all the time but as soon as the pandemic ended that shit's kind of stopped and uh there's just been a weird vacuum (laughs) <laughs> especially now that twitter's dying it's like a weird time but i think we'll be fine because like you know it's all about the ebb and flow of things and eventually things kind of collapse and then new things show up so yeah as it always holding happens. out <laughs> yeah, yeah so another question related to that sort of kind of in the pandemic the huge thing that is what was tiktok so has tiktok in any way affected the way that you do music or approach it um i'd be like i'd be lying if i said no and that's like unfortunate yeah tiktok has kind of taken over the music industry like all of my friends who are on labels like all they do all day is just work on tiktoks and then like they'll make a demo and then put it on tiktok and it's like this like weird pipeline because virality on tiktok is such a powerful tool like i've seen friends like make careers off of that off of just like one video blowing up they get a few thousand followers and it just keeps rolling from there it's a powerful thing um but like it also has caused this weird thing where like if you're not one of those like algorithmically chosen ones then uh you're kind of just playing this like fucked up game where you're like trying like you're playing the lottery over and over i think a lot of people have been stuck on this like tiktok lottery thing where they're just like and the thing is about tiktok is that like the content that it forces you to post is like bottom of the barrel shit that you don't even like you're gonna be ashamed of yeah 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 (laughs) Like, you know, at least when you, like, get popular on Twitter, it's, like, something that's, like, I don't know, has, like, a bit more longevity. Like, people take screenshots of Twitters. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like, this shit lasts a while. But, like, your music promo on TikTok most likely won't be able to be posted anywhere else. It won't have any, like, value. So it's, like, TikTok's tricking us into, like, making valueless content uh, for, you know, to get, like, an audience, which is, like, weird. It's a weird system. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I also, I agree wholeheartedly. And I also got to mention that balancing out the artist and the content creator side of things is, it's got to be extra difficult though. So I ask you, do you do one thing more than the other? How do you balance it all out? Like when it comes to promo and music and stuff? Yeah, like Lizzie the artist versus Lizzie the promoter slash content creator for social media and stuff like that right? it's a balance i'm always tweaking because that's just how the landscape is you kind of always have to be like testing out different proportions of like promoting to like making stuff but generally i try to prioritize making things because that's what i do that's what i'm about um i'm not really about the promo um but i do it because for one thing shout out gloomy again um you know my artist for helping craft this beautiful mascot, this like lizard mascot that I can kind of quote unquote hide behind. 
Um, and you know, I, that makes promo a lot easier when I can kind of push something else other than like my own face out there. Cause I don't really have the energy to be in front of a camera all the time, but, um, <laughs> my lizard does, you know, like I can put, I can put this lizard stuff out there. It's so easy. <laughs> I just post a silly lizard picture with my music and sometimes that's enough. It will like get popping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it feels like true to me, you know, on like, you know, dancing in front of a camera, seeing like, oh, this is the song of the summer. Check it out. <laughs> Most times that'll end up like a cringy type of thing. So, yeah. It's beautiful to have beautiful art to accompany your already great music. You know? um, Thanks. <laughs> I don't know if it's, I don't know if you're a very visual person, but same thing happens to me where I try not to show my face when it comes to my poetry if the poetry and the cover for the book is enough then i don't try to do very much but uh it's a fine line balancing the artist and the content here you know? so switching to a topic that is a lot more fun you mentioned your age 26 so i believe you were in the you were in the early time for stuff like uh, streaming services and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. MySpace was probably dying when you were getting conscious about social media. Facebook was probably the one thing that you watched as a kid and you were like, oh, this is a thing. I'm probably not going to use it because it's it looks pretty old. So I'm mm -hmm. probably going to use Twitter or Instagram or whatever. But having said that, CDs were still a part of your life, I guess, when you were much more of a kid. So I wanted to ask. Um, what was, I guess, if you ever bought a record as a teenager, what was that first record that you bought? Or what was that first record that had a big impact on your life and said, oh, shit, I like music. This is cool. Hey, wow, that's such an awesome question. Um, I would say. And, you know, OK, controversy aside for this person, like warning, this person is a controversial person um, and kind of a bad person, but aren't many artists uh Kanye West uh college dropout late registration those two CDs were like life changers I would put it in my original Xbox and like you the original Xbox had a cool feature you could like download your CDs into it and then use it as like the soundtrack for a game you're playing so I'd be playing like Burnout 3 uh Ooh. with like you know uh heard him say in the background and I was having a great time um so I would say that was like one of the most influential CDs also um, for my 10th birthday, my aunt, she got me uh, a, Cleddy, a Kelly Clarkson CD. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, you know, like since you were gone and all that stuff, it was the most like gay gift ever. Like, uh, it's hilarious <laughs> that like I was in the closet for years after that, because like at that point it was obvious. I'm out of here with the new Kelly Clarkson CD. Um, <laughs> but I love that CD. That shit was awesome. Taught me that like pop music could be good. Nice. Yes. Who knows? Maybe in the future you could sample it at one point or another. Who yeah, knows? or work with her, you know. Shout right? out Kelly, Kelly Clarkson. We For out sure. here. For sure. <laughs> the first album that I ever bought was All Killer No Killer by Sun 41. Ooh, Shout out nice. to those who remember. But the first album that I was gifted by my grandmother, when she rest in peace, was Pokemon, the first movie, the soundtrack. So oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that's if that album is available on Spotify or whatever, but if anybody can find it, I think song number eight, I don't even remember the title, but I think that song was a banger for me as a kid. So, yeah, check it out if you want. Nice. Um, that being said, um, you mentioned VH1 and MTV, all that stuff. So, what was the, the music video that captured your attention the most as a kid? Like for me, there were a few, but the first Gorillaz video uh, Clint Eastwood, that shit was mind blowing when I was. A oh team. yeah. So yeah, which one was that music video for you? Ooh, um, honestly, it might have been Gorillaz too because like I used to go on a uh, Yahoo Music, <laughs> and they'd always be showing like the newest videos and stuff. And I remember the Clint Eastwood video being like mind blowing for me back then. Also, Feel Good Inc. Ooh. That was wild. Um. Oh man, 
there was a there was a Prince video that also left an impression on me because VH1 used to say are like 80s videos and stuff. And honestly, yeah. like so many of those were like their early computer effects and stuff. Really cool and inspiring to me. Nice, nice, nice. Um, I also got to ask, and this one, this is a question that I try to ask musicians all around. There was a there was a point during my, you know, the the podcast that I do the most where I didn't ask the question that much, but I'm doing it again. So desert island, you gotta survive in a desert island with three albums while somebody comes to rescue you. What three albums are you taking with you to survive? Three albums. Um, shit. Let me <laughs> think about that. Uh, I'm putting D'Angelo Voodoo on there. Beautiful. I think that's a that's a really good record that like I feel like wouldn't get old ever. Um, I gotta fulfill my rap needs with a uh, Mad Villainy. Beautiful. I, yeah, I don't, I don't think I can lose with Mad Villainy, honestly. You'll never lose with Mad Villainy. Trust. Um, and then you know I'll, I'll put like a weird one in there. Let's see, I got I got the peaceful. I got raps. I'm gonna put a uh, some Bjork in there, some Ooh. Vespertine. I think Vespertine is a all time album. Beautiful. That's Give a me nice some whimsy, mix. you know. <laughs> that's a nice mix right there i'm pretty sure you'll survive your time in the lizard island whenever <laughs> your your friends or family or whoever comes to rescue you in a week or so you won't Thank go you. mad let's just put it like that yes <laughs> that's beautiful that's beautiful okay this before we close this thing up let people know what you got going on in your life you know social media if you have any projects coming soon be it a single or an EP or whatever Ooh. let us know well y'all uh shout out all the lizards out there for real um if you're not yet a lizard you will be once you listen to my album um you can follow me at uh songs for lizards uh i'm out anywhere you know blue sky even but tell them to like support a video um also you know i'm working on a lot of music so like i'm definitely not finished releasing stuff for the year uh definitely gonna come out with at least a couple more songs and uh stuff for next year yo i'm always on the the road mapping i'm just road mapping all this stuff i got like hella track lists so uh look out for that shit beautiful <laughs> beautiful, beautiful beautiful well Liz, first off thank you for saying yes to the interview i know that we have to reschedule for a lot of reasons but we finally did it finally did it was it. great talking to you man like i'm so glad we could finally hit it off same 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 hopefully or maybe we can do it again in the future, breaking down a project or two. Who knows? Yeah, I'd love too. to. Yeah. Um, second, stay healthy. Drink a lot of water. Uh, over here in Puerto Rico, it's still pretty hot, despite it being October. But, you know, still drink a lot of water, especially the one that is not uh, infected by anything. You know? We staying hydrated this year. Yeah, for sure. This is how to get hydrated. You know, so. so true. Yeah. Uh, and third, um, as we say here in Puerto Rico, palante, you know, keep doing work, keep being you, original, and uh, yeah, can't wait to see more experimental, more, hopefully, heavier shit, I don't know, more melodics, more electronics, who knows, whatever you got in mind, I'll keep my eyes and ears open. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Again, shout out Kafka for putting me up to your music. Shout out Kafka. Yeah. Their name is Lizzie's Personal Army. Songs for Lizards is the Instagram. For, like a four, not as in for you. So, uh, yeah. Lizzie, thank you once again. Absolutely. Peace.